Today on City Line, everything you need to know to build a custom home. It's all about building relationships. Yeah. That's what this process is going to be, and it's going to be a long one. Of course, the bro laws make it a good time. And standing walls was so satisfying, Tracy. <laughs> it was so much fun. Then staging your home to sell. Whatever your design style is, yeah. the right way to go when it comes to staging is contemporary because it's that universal language of love. Everyone can appreciate contemporary. And later, affordable DIY projects to refresh your decor. So I'm going to show you some really cool projects that you can do to vamp up your space. It's City Life with Tracy Moore. Today, and it's good to see everyone with us today. Welcome to City Line. Amazing show for you today. We have an amazing show every day, but today we're going to chat about the importance of home staging. We've got DIY wallpaper projects to level up your space and tips on how to properly insulate your home. It is so important. We want to save you some money. But first, ever thought of what it takes to build a home from scratch? Here with their custom home checklist. They're so excited about this. The Bro Laws, Dave, Kenny, and Joey Fletcher are here. I'm excited for you. And I love that you guys came on all like this. You're all like humble, but really, but really, you're super excited about we this. Are. You're like bursting from the seams excited. How many people can say, I built a house, right. like from the right. ground up. And this is something that you've wanted to do for a while, right? Yeah. It is. It's something that we've always dreamt as of little kids wanting to grow up and build a home. Um, but, like, I mean, we came to the show here and we were probably a couple years into our renovation business. Yeah. And now we're building our first custom home as a company. And, like, it just, the growth has been fun to go through. And it's just something that we really wanted to be able to celebrate. And we've been celebrating ourselves. Yeah. But to be able to share it with the audience as well. Because, I mean, the community through social media in the building industry has been really, really great yeah. for us. Nice. Being able to lean on them for advice along the way. They've kind of told us places along the way where they've messed up and have been able to kind of give us forewarning. Mm -hmm. And then we want to be able to like share that community aspect with the City Line community because you guys have been so generous to us as we've been growing up as well. It's been fantastic working with you both. And this is like a milestone for you and for us because we get to share uh, in it with you. And we love when our experts make mistakes <laughs> because that's how we learn. Exactly. So there's so much to think about. Uh, first things first, you got to pick the right person for the job. So what are we talking about here? It's all about building relationship. Yeah. That's what this process is going to be. And it's going to be a long one. So that's yeah. one thing to take into account. Building a home is a very long process. These people are going to be in your life for maybe multiple years. Yes. So build a relationship of trust, and the first two people you're going to have to build that with are a general contractor, or a GC as we like to be called, mm -hmm. and an architect who's actually going to design the home. So some things you need to take into uh, context there are mm -hmm. an architect is going to design a home, and if you start there and you build a great relationship and you trust them and they design this beautiful home, and then you try to take that to a general contractor or shop it around, they may tell you that's well outside your budget, whatever has been mm. designed. So it's really important to try to build those two relationships at the same time. Right. Get a general contractor that you know you can trust, you know they're not gonna try to burn you on the price, and get an architect that you know wants the design and knows your vision, and then you can have those two work together to have something that's within budget that you can actually build and love once it's done. Okay, so those two need to get hired and starting talking yeah. to each other right away right so that the they're game. both on the same page. Exactly. Yeah. General contractor, by the way, these two. <laughs> these two. Put oh. them on the list. Okay, next up, this is such an important one. Prepare to wait. Yes. yes. It is so much hurry up and wait, whether it's a new build or you're in a reno. No one told me that. It's like, where are my countertops? What's yeah. going on? <laughs> so let's talk about, like, what are we waiting for? Yeah, and this is something that we were prepared for but I wasn't prepared for like waiting and waiting and waiting. And I'm a very excitable person. You know me. Like, Are you? I yeah. have no idea. So when I found out that like our drawings were going in for permitting, we've already gotten through variances and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm like, all right, we're on track. Things are progressing. Let's go. We started putting up fencing around the property. Woo! We shut down all the utilities. You had to have an exterminator come through to make sure there weren't rodents hey. living in the house yeah. before a demo. So we went through all of those steps of the process, preparing. We even popped champagne. Right? We popped champagne. We were Had a celebrating. Full party. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then 
We waited and waited and waited because the drawings went into the city. The city has to deal with permitting, and they have engineers that have to look through things. They have to go back to the architect. There's surveyors. Everybody has to be on the same page here to make sure that the house that's designed can fit properly on this property, right? Got it. So there's a lot of pieces that go along in that puzzle. What I was able to do, because a lot of that's out of my control, right? Yeah. But being a GC, I was able to be able to be the annoying person sending emails and phone calls to all of yes. those people to make sure that it was actually happening because they've got large piles, they've got a lot that they're working through and if you're not on top of it, you might get buried underneath all of their files. Yeah, yeah for every project, you need somebody to advocate for the project. Yeah. Yes. And, and if you're the homeowner, people have made the mistake of being the homeowner and think, well, I can also manage this project. Right. Yeah. While you're working with a family <laughs> and you have all these other things, you need someone else to be doing that. Yes. Being like the annoying nudge, nudge, nudge. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you for that. That's what's needed. Yeah. So, okay, you finally get your permits, you were ready to go. It's oh, time yeah. to demolish. <laughs> like, just demolition is the part, like, yes. that looks so fun. Let's talk about that, uh, that part of it. We it came, is. We came in like a couple wrecking balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so exciting. And this is the part that any kid who played with any kind of truck or little excavator, yeah. this is the yes. part that's super exciting. So that was us. We were little kids standing on the sidelines watching these giant excavators take down this house. So cool. It was so satisfying to watch. It was uh, a lot of fun, but it also came with our first first hard-earned lesson. Ooh, okay. Yes. Uh, so a lesson we learned here is that when you are demoing a big house like this, you need to have a water truck on site. A water truck with like a big fire hose. So you want to soak that house down first and while it's coming down, you want to be soaking it so that dust doesn't go up into the air and find its way through a gentle breeze onto neighbors' properties. Yeah. Oh. Because we know how important a relationship is with a client. The relationship with the neighbors around when you're doing a new build are just as important. Yeah. And unfortunately, that was something that we missed. And there was right. a breeze the day that this happened, and there was a lot of dust. So by the end of the day, the neighbor's car was quite covered in dust. Uh -huh. um, we, we took precautions and came back the next day with car wash gift certificates for yeah. everybody because yeah. we wanted to take care of them as much as we could. Yeah. Um, and we even had to pay to get one of their air conditioners repaired because the amount of dust clogged the filters and overheated it. Yeah. Right. Um, we were able to mend those relationships well and we were actually in a better place with those neighbors now. Yeah. So it kind of forced us into having more conversations and getting to know them a little bit better. Yeah. So unfortunate, but you know how to Learn. turn something good exactly. if you yes. know how to keep relationships good, right? Yes. Listen, if I had a couple of GCs like you go, ding dong, here's right. some car wash certificates. <laughs> Would you like some wine? How about some flowers? Exactly. Maybe some chocolate. <laughs> I would be happy to say, okay, but yeah. the thing that you need to keep in mind when you're doing renos or a new build, whatever it is, you're annoying. Right. Yes. There's someone being exactly. annoyed on it's that true. street by yep. you, right? So it's noisy, there's things happening, so be nice, and it's good that you yeah. keep that top of mind. And we had Absolutely. to own our mistake. You I think that's a lot it. of things that people yeah. don't are, yes. aren't willing to do, where we said, listen, we're really sorry, our inexperience caused this to happen, yeah. and we we're willing to try to do what we can do to make it right. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much. Yeah. People owning stuff, right? right. please. <laughs> Just as a general rule of thumb of, as grown-ups, like yes. own your mistakes. <laughs> okay, so now we have all the neighbors are on board, they love you, it's time to lay the foundation. Let's yes. talk about that. Yeah, element. so house is gone, now the surveyors come in. So they're mm -hmm. the ones who dictate where this house gets built and how deep into the ground it goes. Mm -hmm. So they did all their markings, now it's time for the big machines to come back. They dug out for our foundation, and then you have to have a soil engineer come in. Okay. They come in to test the soil underneath the home, because you can build a strong home and a strong foundation, but if the soil isn't solid enough underneath, it can still sink. Oh, so wouldn't once... that be terrible? Exactly. Right. So yeah, if you they... dig down and then all of a sudden this soil's not good. <laughs> now the house starts to do one of these. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem. So they came through and then we could get to the foundation. Okay, beautiful. And the um, foundation part was actually super quick. Like, that's yeah. the part that was a whirlwind. Because we're waiting, 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 but then all of a sudden, demo house, dig a hole. And the next thing you know, there is, like, fa uh, forms up, concrete being poured, and we've got a foundation all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like, you wait and wait and wait, and then when there's yes. activity, there's activity. Oh, yeah. Yes. Like, you get through a lot. So next is the building, and that's got to be wildly satisfying for you. So you're building now the structure of this house. Yeah, this was huge for us. It was a lot of fun, and, like... 
One other note is when you get into this phase of the project and you've got this big hole in the ground, you've got dirt everywhere. We didn't have a lot of room on this site because it's kind of tucked away in the corner. Mm -hmm. So building a relationship with your local hardware center is huge. Mm -hmm. So Home Hardware was able to help us schedule out our material yeah. deliveries so that way we had what, what we needed when we needed it. Yes. So that way we didn't just have a, everything on once. Because it takes a lot of material to be yeah. able to build a house, right? <laughs> right? But this is where we got to put our skills to the test and actually build from the ground up. So so starting with the floor system and putting all of your joists across and subfloor mm -hmm. and standing walls was so satisfying, Tracy. <laughs> this is something I've seen people do yeah. so many times. And to be able to do it yourself, yes. to build the wall, you lay it out on the ground often when you build it first, mm -hmm. and then you all get around it and you lift that wall up into place, you level so it and cool. nail it in, and it was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> I remember uh, we only moved once when I was a kid, and that was in 1985. And there was like a weekly drive to the new house as it was right. being built. <laughs> There's something so exciting yes. about that. So yes. you all are doing it. I'm sure the homeowners are as well. Yeah. They're looking at the prog pro progress. They're really excited. And I love that we are going to sort of do the whole journey with you. Yeah. Yes, right? we've got trades coming through next, yes. and then we can do drywall in the interior, and there's yes. lots to share with you for that. Very good, <laughs> thank you guys. The Burlaws are actually gonna be back later in the show talking about the importance of properly insulating your home. But for now, time for a break. <laughs> Stay with us, congratulations! Coming up, all the staging tips and tricks to maximize your return. There's a few things. There's we're a few gonna, things. We're gonna list them out for you yeah. and give you more tips on how to stage your home to sell for top dollars. Welcome back, everyone. Is this the year that you decide to sell your house? If so, we're going to show you the difference home staging can make when it comes to getting top dollar for your investment. Please welcome staging and design expert Farah Singh. Thank welcome, you. Welcome, Farah. Thank you, thank you. So it's good to have you here to talk about this. I think um, people think about staging and sometimes they think, well, this is sort of superfluous. Like, do we necessarily need it? Yes, you do. Absolutely. It's going to make a huge dollar difference in what you can get for your house. And it all starts with that first listing photograph. That's right. You're on MLS or whatever the website is now. You're looking for your home and you're looking at those photos and you're looking at, okay, I could live there. That's right. So let's talk about those. Well, you know, you couldn't be uh, more on point with that because when you're starting your home search, that search begins online. Yeah. So to drive the point home, Tracy, I have a few before and after photos okay. to show you and uh, let's get right into it. So. First of all, if uh, you were at home looking at the picture to the left or the picture to the right, which one would make you want to book a showing and see? This one, right. ding, ding, ding. Like it looks, it looks clean, it looks calm. It looks like I can see myself just like sitting on that sectional. Exactly. So you want to make that initial connection using strong online photos mm -hmm. so that your photos are standing out in the competition. Yeah. But some of the big staging techniques that we used here is take a look at this area rug. Uh -huh. Way too small for the space. Okay. Also, we have big pops of color, but that's not coordinating anywhere else in the room. Yeah. Also, see this cushion? It looks mm -hmm. messy. It looks almost forgotten about. Yeah. So You know the thing that jumps out to me the most, though? Tell me. That lamp. It's random. Yeah, it's just random. It's a random lamp. Yeah, and I mean, the colors work together, but also, like, I'd be looking at that, like, I don't know. And what you should be looking at is the beautiful fireplace that's over here right. and the bright windows. Okay. So what we did in the after photo is, first of all, we brought a larger area rug. What yeah. this does is it helps the room appear larger, and we're framing this amazing fireplace. Yes, then, beautiful. Then we brought in neutral artwork. It's always great to neutralize the space because we want as many people to be interested and see themselves living there. Okay. And also we brought furniture that was to scale and caliber of this property, letting in natural light. This is well presented and ultimately this is what led to the sale. When the house was listed on the market here, it took yeah. over three months unsuccessful really? at staging. After we staged it, it sold within 30 days. Oh, amazing. And yeah. that's the difference it can make. You also have to keep in mind, we're living in a very aesthetic culture right now. 
So people are on Instagram, they're on Pinterest, right. they want things to be pretty. Perfect. You have to appeal to that. And it's not so much about money as it is about just having some style. That's right. And not a lot of clutter. Exactly. Not a lot of things. Exactly. Okay, so this is also a really good idea. Walk us through this before and after. So when we're st selling the home, we want to make sure that people can see themselves chilling, enjoying a mm -hmm. movie. With the furniture the way that it's currently placed, it doesn't feel comfortable. Yeah. Also, we have big pops of red. The furniture looks worn. If you take a look at the after, everything feels way more cohesive. Right. What we did was we brought in a cozy sectional. Mm -hmm. Now I can see myself sitting on that sofa, enjoying my favorite episode of City Line. Yeah. We added, <laughs> we added some more ottomans. We wanted to create more seating. We added some natural elements as well. Yeah. And we removed that ornate cabinet and replaced it with something a little bit more dainty. Uh -huh. This way we're seeing more house, less homeowner. Are you, would you say that most folks want to see that contemporary type design, like even if they're uber tradi traditional? traditional? Whatever your design style is, yeah. the right way to go when it comes to staging is mm -hmm. contemporary because it's that universal language of love. Got it. Everyone can appreciate contemporary. Right. And they probably feel like it's modern, it's now, like this is where I should be even if this is not my style. So exactly. that makes sense. Okay, so next up, we have another before and after. Drastic difference here. Right. What room in the house is this even? Because in that one, it looks like it might be a basement, and this one looks light and bright. That's exactly it. And you know what? Because it's so dark, it, I, I wouldn't hold it past you to think that that's the basement. Mm -hmm. The windows, no natural light coming in. Right. We have a dark sectional that's blocking flow in the space as well. Mm -hmm. If you take a look at what we did in the after, first and foremost, we cleaned up the clutter, removed yep. all the personal ornaments. We placed the sofa along the wall so that it frames the fireplace. Mm -hmm. We added sec uh, more seating. Mm -hmm. And this way, when you enter, there's flow into the room. Nice. We also brought in pops of light blue, so to give the room a calm as opposed to chaotic feel. Okay, how many of you would have that space and then you'd hire Farah to do staging to sell it and get that space and then wouldn't want to leave anymore? Because <laughs> yeah. to me, right? I think a lot of us, we see what you can do with staging and then we want to stay there. Like, is it ever an option to Absolutely. just... Absolutely. It happens can do a lot. That? In fact, sometimes the homeowner doesn't want to sell anymore because they fell in love with their space all over That's again. That's so good. But um, we do offer selling the pieces to the new buyers if they needed it, if they would like to. Really good. Okay, I want to talk about the first thing people see if they're going to come to uh, an open house and that is the exterior. Exactly. That's got to speak to people. You've got a beautiful vignette here of what you need to be thinking about. Okay, so the pictures got you to the front door. Yeah. But that first connection is outside. So yeah. having great curb appeal tells the buyer that the inside will likely follow suit. Right. So I've got some really great tips on that. Okay. First and foremost, you want to seal the driveway. Make it look fresh and clean. Mm -hmm. Second, a nice coat of paint. Freshly painted doors also demonstrate value. Absolutely. New hardware, yeah. as well as cute little accents. Yes. So you'll notice that the welcome mat that we brought has the word home in it. Yeah. Home sweet home, subliminally, uh -huh. is telling the buyer, this is my home sweet home. This You're is my there. Dream. I'm it's already yours. there. Exactly. Nice. And then just to top it all off, mm -hmm. we brought this beautiful green plant. So having lush greenery as well is a good idea. Yeah. And then a cozy little seating area for you to lounge, take in the view. So now you're already saying, take me inside. I want to see what else is in here. Absolutely. I like the, the idea that the outside needs to match the inside, exactly. right? So that they know what they're going to get. So this is very cool. You're going to, uh, Far is going to give us a staging lesson here in the studio. Yep. So we can take some of these tips and maybe use them at our homes and maybe not even move. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. So take a look at this living room. Beautiful space. There's nothing wrong with it. Probably most of us are living in a space that may look like this. Um, but it probably needs a little bit of help if you're going to put it on the market and list it. What do you think we need to do with this space, Farah? Well, I'm going to throw Shush that back at you. Bit. You tell me. What's the first thing that stands out to you? Well, uh, you know, the mismatched furniture maybe. And I know we shouldn't be going to a showroom and, you know, buying our whole living room. But there's, there's something about the contrast between the sofa and the chairs, those wine-colored chairs and then the white sofa that needs a little something something yeah and maybe the rug too it's all over and maybe the, place. the pillows too yeah like there's a few things 
things. There's a, there's a few things. There's we're a few things. We're going to list them out for you, and I can't wait to show you the transformation. Yeah. And give you more tips on how to stage your home to sell for top dollar. Very excited. Okay, we will see that a little bit later in the show. For now, we're going to take a quick break. Thank you, Farah. Thank you. Good job. Thank you so much. Coming up, simple DIY decor hacks. So this will this will also like give you a little bit of fun and whimsy in your space, and it's, it's not does. permanent. It's not. A lot of us want a quick way to refresh our home. We don't want to spend a lot of money. So how about trying mini wallpaper projects? Here with her fun, easy DIY fixes is Mary Segay. So happy to have you here. Thank you for having me. Happy New Year. Happy that you're here. And I remember being a kid and just thinking, I want a new bedroom. And I moved around the furniture in my bedroom. And it was like, oh my gosh, I have a new bedroom. Same. I did the right? same thing. It's a small space, but you move your bed from one wall to the next. And it's, it's a, a new space. Deal. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big deal. So we're going to do little projects that are going to make you feel good about your space. You're going to use wallpaper because often we have leftovers. Exactly. So I'm going to show you some really cool projects that you can do to vamp up your space. The mm -hmm. first one we're going to do is covering some books. So nice. if you have some books that ha are different colors but doesn't yeah. really match the aesthetic of your space, this is a really cool way to make it do that, right? Beautiful. So I'm going to put you to work. Okay. I've lifted up a little piece for you here. <laughs> so what you're going to want to do is cut the wallpaper about an inch bigger than the book all the way around. Got it. And then you're slowly going to start peeling it. This is peel and stick wallpaper, so it comes off fairly easily. It's just like a big sticker. So I'll get awesome. you to hold that side. And, and all you'll need for these projects are a little squeegee. If you don't have this particular tool, you can use a credit card or anything just hard to help you push it down as you go. I feel like a real baller with a credit card, eh? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so this is so you're doing this so that you get all of the air out. Because exactly. you don't want the air bubbles. And I'm you thinking, don't want the bubbles. Right. I'm thinking if you get your books from those free little libraries that uh, you often have in communities and you like the book but it doesn't look cute. Yeah. This is a good way to handle that. Exactly. So you just wrap it like a present, you just pull it all the way around. And the cool thing about this is if you have some wallpaper from a project that you've done, mm -hmm. but you don't have enough to cover the whole book yeah you can just put it around half of the book so I'll show you one example here Ooh, we you got it there. there all right so we just cover about half the book oh there you go that's good enough though yeah you know it's like it's like the gift you keep the bottom of it maybe half wrapped and but when it's in you don't see it what an easy way to do it and listen you're right? still you can still read the book you're exactly. just doing the cover and then you would tuck in the top part yes but you got your book and it looks gorgeous. And it looks great. Very nice. Yeah. Okay, so that's a book. What's our next project? Our next project are these lampshades. These lampshades are so beautiful. So I had this extra one, and it has a couple stains on it. It's not the cleanest. It's had a little bit of, of wear and tear. But yeah. instead of throwing it out, you can just cover it with wallpaper, nice. again, to match, match the aesthetic of your space, right? Okay, so this will also, like, give you a little bit of fun and whimsy in your space, and it's it not does. permanent. It's not. You can take right. it off, and you can replace it. Again, we're using peel-and-stick wallpaper for all of these projects. Yeah. And we're going to do almost the same thing. So you're just going to cut the wallpaper before you attach it. Okay. About an inch wider than the lampshade. Was this a one-woman job or did someone help you? I so I'm thinking this thing gonna roll away. <laughs> it was tough. I did it on the floor so you have yeah. to have a little bit of space but you pull it away a little bit and Good. then you have it back here and then you just lay it down. There you go. Perfect. So you lay it down. Good. Easy peasy. And as you pull it back you just make sure to smooth it down so that, like you said before there's no bubbles. Nice. Right? And then once you have it wrapped all the way around, all you're going to do is tuck in these edges on both sides. You just tuck them in. And it doesn't it have to like be this. any, it's, you know, unrefined, right? Yes. <laughs> and then you get this beautiful new lampshade, uh, lamp which we're going to add so to your space. Isn't that nice? Lovely. Gorgeous. I love the little polka dots, too. Okay, so we've done our lamp, we've done our books. Let's talk about our coasters. So this is how these ones how turned out. They're so is. beautiful, and each one has its unique kind of style because yeah. they're not exactly the same. The wallpaper, you'll get different sections of them. Nice. And again, we're going to do it very similarly to what we did before with all the okay. other projects, right? So again, you cut it out to the size of your coaster. 
For this one, we're not going to do an inch all the way around. We're just going to do about an inch on the left and the right. And then we're going to wrap it all the way around. Okay. Right? All right. If so... you don't have enough wallpaper, again, you can just do half. As long as the top is covered, you can't see the bottom. No one's really lifting up your coasters to take a look at them. They better not, or get out of my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? Again, you wrap them like it's perfect. And then you can just add that to your console or your table, wherever that is. And Beautiful. you'll have to cut it and then tape it down. Yeah, oh, I there see. There you go. Okay. Yeah. But this is sort of the idea. Sort yeah. of like wrapping a present. If you're one of those people that likes to wrap gifts, this is going to give you a lot of satisfaction. Exactly. And you Super can pick easy. whatever style you want to match the aesthetic of your house. Okay, now we have to talk about, first of all, I want to talk about this gorgeous woman um, in the frame here. Is that mommy? Stunning. That's my mom. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> and what a lovely way to present her with these gorgeous uh, mats that have uh, wallpaper on them. So that's beautiful. Yeah, so most that? picture frames that you buy will come with a mat inside of it. Yeah. And sometimes, most of the time, they're usually just plain white. And yes. sometimes you want a little bit more fun, right? See? So this is the matting in your in your uh, picture. And yes. this is the thing we're going to put the uh, wallpaper on. So you get your wallpaper. If you don't have enough, again, you can cut it around the sides of the mat. Okay. But I had a little bit of extra, so I cut it to the exact size. And you're going to do paint the whole thing or exactly. put it on the whole thing. You're going to lay it down. I'll get you to get that corner. Yep. Might not be perfect. This but is going. We'll lay it no, down. it has to be perfect. Let's okay. see if I can do this on TV. Perfect. Well, close enough. It's good. And yeah. then you brush out all the bubbles. Yep. It's and a little this, bubbly. And, and the then, good thing about the peel and stick mat is, or the peel and stick wallpaper, is that you can lift it up. If there is a little bit of a bubble, you can lift it up and put it back down. And it's, then you just cut out the square. Yes. You'll have a little exacto knife yeah. that you can just. Puncture it and rip it right down. Amazing. Yeah. This is really beautiful wallpaper, too. Oh, I love this. It adds a little bit of color. Look at that. It's so fresh and so clean, clean. Yeah. So good. Very nice. So many beautiful wallpaper options out there. It doesn't have to break the bank, but no. I love the idea of using whatever leftover you have from your exactly. other projects. Your DIYs are always so beautiful, Mary. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you. Gorgeous. Let's go to break. We've got more coming up. Stay with us, everybody. This one is coming up all about insulation, what you need to know. A house at its roots is just a shelter. So it's supposed to shelter you from the elements. So you want to start with proper insulation. getting that living space staged and you're going to see the amazing transformation uh, before the end of the show. But before we get there, we want to talk about keeping your space warm. Insulation is crucial in home construction. Unlike paint or trim, changing it later means stripping back to the studs. It's not an easy task. You want to get it right, right from the jump. So the Burlaws are back with everything we need to know about insulation. Yes. You want to, as my parents say, not heat the outside. Yes. yes. You want to heat the inside. <laughs> exactly. You want to heat your home and save your money. So let's start with the exterior of the house, and then we'll work our way in. Yes, absolutely. So we all know that the most important part of a structure is the structure itself of the house. Yes. If that's not built well, it's going to fall down. The second most important, in our opinion, and often overlooked, is the insulation. Okay. A house at its roots is just a shelter. So it's supposed to shelter you from the elements. So you want to start with proper insulation to keep that warm air in in the, in the wintertime yeah. and the cold air in in the summertime. So what we have here is what's going on the outside of the house. And when we talk about insulation, we're going to talk about R value. So you often hear that R20, R14, R60. Mm -hmm. That R stands for resistance to heat transfer. So the bigger the number, yeah. the more resistance there is, the more that heat that's going to stay inside. Okay. So on the outside of this house, we did a product called Isobrace Air Plus. It's made by Isolo, Isolo Foam, which is a Canadian company, which we always love. Amazing. And this went all around the outside of the house from the basement all the way to the attic. And it was a very fast product for us to use, which we love as contractors. Yeah. Okay. So because we've got vinyl going on the outside of this house, vinyl doesn't have an R value. There's no insulation value to that. So we wanted to make sure that we were 
adding something else to the exterior. So this is a sheathing material, which is what you see with the wood, mm -hmm. which would typically go on every house. So you've got your studs, you gotta have something that's attaching all that together and giving it some sheer structure. Right. So that's what you've got with that. Then we've got that insulation. So you can see this foam that's providing us that R5 insulation on the outside of the house. Yep. And then we've got our house wrap there as well. So it's all three of those products in one. So it made for a faster install for us, which helped save our clients some money on budget as well. Yes. Okay, so you've got these three layers happening. It's all in one plank, you exactly. get it? Exactly. And you put that everywhere. Yes. Yeah. So now we gotta go inside. Exactly. Yes. What are so, we doing inside the house to make sure that heat stays in? Before we <clears throat> jump in there, one of the main reasons why we have this on the outside is because in between each stud cavity, you've got all of these studs. And where there is a piece of wood, mm -hmm. that's reducing the R value of the oh. wall itself, right? Okay. So you're gonna fill these studs with insulation, but everywhere there is one of these, you're losing that but by adding this to the outside, it's reinforcing where each one is so that it's giving it that R value and kind of air sealing everything in better. Fair. Absolutely, okay. and you have I several options when it comes to insulating on the inside. We've mm -hmm. all seen the pink insulation that goes up. Yes. That's typically a fiberglass insulation that's going in between the studs. Uh -huh. You have a blown-in insulation option that can be thrown in. It's a very similar material, but it's just broken down into tiny pieces and then blown in with kind of reverse vacuum. Okay. Um, and then you have a spray foam option. Yeah, yeah, and because on this house we've got a lot of different angled roofs that are vaulted all the way up. Mm -hmm. So we're going to spray foam those ceilings because with spray foam you can get more R value, a bigger number, in a smaller space. Yeah. Yeah. So that way we can heat and insulate those cavities properly. And because we were getting that priced out, we got them to just give us a price on spray foam for everything. Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and it actually ended up being the most cost effective for this project because really? they're already going to be there doing those other aspects. And yeah. the spray foam is great because they're going to come in and spray foam in between each one. So they're sealing it in, they do it in layers so mm -hmm. that it's really um, forming properly and sealing in all of those little gaps, nooks and crannies yes. everywhere along the way. Because it, So it like plumps up. Exactly. Yes. Right, they put it in and it plumps up so you know it's gonna get in every corner. But yes. every time I've seen it used, just everyone's always like, it's expensive. Yeah. Yes, and it is, and but, that's why it shocked me even yeah. in this build. But it makes sense, I guess, sometimes if you're looking at a cost analysis, if it's really exactly. going to be in every nook and cranny and it's gonna keep that heat in, right? Another great note that I wanna just plug in there is make yeah. sure you have somebody who's licensed to do it yes. and who has experience do it and you have references for it. Because yeah. if that's done incorrectly, yeah. it can create huge issues and it is not fun to clean up. So not just Uncle Joe? Exactly. <laughs> unless, uh, unless Uncle Joe has the license. Exactly. Right? Then bring okay. him in. So basically the way that I like to explain insulation to people is to make it tangible and understandable is yeah. think about going out on a cold day. You want to bundle up properly, right? Mm -hmm. So the ISO brace on the outside of the house, that's like our long johns. It's yeah. our base layer that's going to keep us warm and cozy. Yeah. Then your puffy jacket that you're going to get on nice and cozy, that's your yeah. spray foam. Nice. Then your attic insulation, you've got your toque on top. Then yes. you don't have the heat yes. sleeping through the attic. <laughs> and then in the basement, you can add some foam to underneath the concrete there. Ooh. And that's like your wool socks in the basement, you know? Yes. It can keep you nice and toasty, warm all around the house. And you can experience a lot of heat loss in a house. Yeah. So by going through these steps, this is not a glorious place to spend money, right? Nobody wants to spend feel money. It doesn't because it's like, it's not pretty and no one's yeah. ever gonna see my exactly. spray foam. <laughs> but by doing it, it properly, matter. you can save up to 30 to 45% on your energy bills, right? Wow. So if you're building a house that's going to last, doing this is going to pay off for you in the long run. Right. Okay, you mentioned the attic is the toque. Yes. yes. Um, what are we doing up in the attic and why is that important? So that's typically always that blown in insulation. So mm -hmm. small pieces that are blown up into the attic and this is the most important part arguably of the insulation because heat rises. We all know that. Yeah. So if it keeps rising, it's just going right out of the house. <laughs> so typically you want R60 in an attic. And okay. this wasn't the standard even up to 15 years ago. So a lot of homes do not have that much insulation in the attic. So it's always a good thing to check out. Even if you're not building a custom home for yourself, yeah. even if you have an existing home, have a professional come in, take a look up there. It can be cleared out, vacuumed out and redone, or they can just add more on top if that's all that you need. But yeah. this is a very uh, practical thing that anybody can do.
attic. What if it's not the attic? What if it's the rest of the house? Is it worthwhile to look into your insulation? Or are we like, you gotta tear everything down? When we're doing renovations and we're opening up walls, so mm -hmm. if we're doing a bathroom and we're taking down walls, then it's a good opportunity to be able to look at that insulation, see if there's been any air loss and any damage to it so that yeah. you can remove it and replace it with something a little newer. I mean, building science is going along of, yeah. like quickly, right? So everything's yeah. evolving, products are evolving. So there are newer products that you can put in place to upgrade if you're living in an older home. Yes. Or in the basement is one of the biggest places where typically you'll see around the base of the basement a basement blanket, which is only like an R5 insulation. Ooh. And if you're finishing that basement now and building walls in front of it, you want to make sure that you remove that old insulation and put up closer to like an R22 insulation so that it's going to be able to uh, balance that heat better in the basement for you. Very good. Okay, thank you so much, guys. We're going to go to break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs> good info. <laughs> Coming up, it's time to see the results of our living room staging. Look at this. This is going to sell. This is going to sell. It's time to reveal our stage living room with Farah. So earlier, uh, we were talking about how staging can really transform a space. And we showed you what a typical living room might look like in most of our homes. Um, so this is what it looked like. Lovely space, great furniture, a little cluttered. It could use a bit of an edit. So now that Farah has been through here, take a look at the space now. It's been staged. Look at this. This is going to sell. This is going to sell. So um, talk to me about what you did here to make such a huge transformation, Farah. First and foremost, we depersonalized and we neutralized. Right. So if you can recall, there were family photos in the before. Yeah. It was a little bit of tissues, masks, <laughs> yeah. games, toys. Listen, nobody wants to know what you did last night. When yes. a buyer walks through, they want to see themselves living there. It's very psychological. Mm -hmm. So we cleaned up, we depersonalized, and we made sure that we presented a neutral palette yeah. so that you or me could just lounge back yeah. and enjoy the space. So you can actually see yourself lounging on this sofa. Would right. you ever actually go to a home and, and the homeowners would have like, you know, used Kleenex and stuff? Like, do you really have to clean that much? Unfortunately, yes. when you're living in a space, you don't yeah. realize, you don't see it. You don't you, see it. It's every day. Yeah, so that's yeah, why yeah. when you hire an expert to come in, we go in with a discerning eye. And yeah. we say, you know what, we need this to be moved here, this to be moved here. Mm -hmm. So that way we're showcasing more of the house, less of the homeowner. Love that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about furniture placement because you made some changes here and you replaced some furniture. Yes, we did. Anything standing out to you? Because I know the furniture oh, was Oh, you got rid of the chairs that yes. were bothering me. <laughs> so I like that. These are super neutral, very calm, beautiful. They look generous. And comfortable. And comfortable. Let let's me just test that out. Just take a seat. And oh, yes. Right? They swivel. They yes. move. They're they, multifunctional. And they even rock. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Yeah, this so is great. We can we can have a conversation with whoever's sitting in the sofa. We can yeah. also have a conversation with whoever else is in the room. Yeah. So this type of furniture layout really allows the buyer to enjoy the space. Yes. Right? Love that. Now, Tracy, I know that you've done a few pillow chops on the show, but you haven't done one with me yet. I've done many, I've done many pillow many? chops. Many? Okay, well do then you, you should your... be an expert. I should. Okay, well let's let's do one together. Okay. All right, so pillows. First yeah. of what I like to do is I like to make sure oh. that it's even on all sides. See, I'm already doing it wrong then. Little, I've never done that. <laughs> little tap, 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 tap. Yeah. Then you want to pick it up by its ears. Yeah. Push all of that insert to the bottom. Okay. Place it gently. Gently. I like to gently. I'm like, ah. Not aggressively. Okay. <laughs> Got it. And just a little tap, tap. And voila, now you have a perfect presented pillow. Not Very bad. Nice. Oh, not okay. bad at all. Not Look bad at, you, at all. cutie. <laughs> okay, I learned a thing or two there. Uh, beautiful. Anything else that you did to this space to really transform it? I mean, there's a lot of, there's accessories as well. Exactly. The yeah. accessories bring in that warmth factor. Right. But you'll notice that there's a little bit more color coordination going on in the room. Absolutely. Before we had reds, yellows, blues. It was chaotic. Yeah. Now we have blacks, yeah. whites, and beiges. And it bounces because you'll see black in the artwork, mm -hmm. you'll see black in the accessories, mm -hmm. and you'll see black in the pillows as well. Very so this nice. allows the buyer to bounce throughout the room and feel a little bit more organized, like yeah. it's put together well. 
Are you always dealing mostly with sort of a light white color palette? And is there a psychology behind that? Well, white makes everything appear brighter yeah. and bigger. So yeah. we want to maximize space okay. when we're staging. We want the rooms to feel as big as possible. Right. So white is always the way to go. And That's most, always the way to go. Most people don't buy white sofas. No. Because it's I'm hard to keep clean. <laughs> after hockey. It's like, you get off my <laughs> couch. Yeah, yeah. No and I never wanted there. a house that was going to be too precious. I want people to know they can sit wherever you want to sit. But I understand in terms of selling a space, right. it makes a lot of sense. You'll notice that even though everything's white and light and airy, mm -hmm. we still have some depth. That's why we have that contrasting black. Yes just to bring in a little bit more of that warmth factor as well. 100%. And of course, removing all those photographs, now the home buyer uh, or the potential home buyer that's mm -hmm. walking through, they're not seeing your stuff. It doesn't yeah. feel like they're walking through a stranger's house. Yeah. It feels like they're walking through what could potentially be their dream home. And then they start the imagining and that's where it all begins. Thank you so much, Farah. Well done. Thank Let's you. go to break. More coming up, everyone. It's beautiful. It's calm. You. Yes, you. I've got a seat in City Line's audience waiting just for you. Head to cityline.tv slash tickets to go behind the scenes with your favorite experts, the chance of great giveaways, plus all the unexpected fun of bringing City Line to your screens. What are you waiting for? Go click. We can't wait to see you. Ready to unleash a brand new you? Wow, you're like a million bucks. <laughs> CityLine's Glam Squad wants to give you the makeover of your dreams. Head to cityline.tv and click on the makeover tab or just scan the code on your screen. Oh my goodness! Your new look is only a click away. to home day everyone look everyone's all together because we are going to tackle some design dilemmas and we've got like the brain trust in here today so <laughs> let's ask them some questions um i want to start with designing a space when you're designing a space are you going for trendy are you going for timeless what is more important? What, do you, what would you say, Farah? I would say timeless. timeless. That way you're not spending an absorbent amount of money refreshing your space. But if you want the best of both worlds, do timeless on the big pieces mm. and then add the trends with the accessories. Yes, I love that. And I could see that in some of your, your art pieces and your DIYs. Maybe you want to be a little trendy, but you want it to be something that you're going to be able to change and it's not going to be a big deal. Exactly. And honestly, trendy means something different to everyone. What's yes. trending for... The masses might not be something that you like, but it might be trending in your culture. It might be trending yeah. back home. So you really have to just choose what works for you in your space. I love that. Yeah, make it your thing. Okay, so how do you balance, and I'll give this to the bro laws, how do you balance a client's vision with their budget? Ooh, <laughs> that is a loaded question. Yeah, <laughs> like are there some strategies? I know we were talking at the beginning of the show, like what if the architect has drawn this gorgeous design and the contractor's like, that is way beyond the budget. Like, what do you say with a client who has champagne tastes on a beer budget? I mean, you gotta, you can get creative, but also mm -hmm. sometimes we'll phase projects out too. So not okay. to think that you have to do everything all in one shot. Yes. If you got to do all of your bathrooms, maybe let's do one at a time to be able to spread that budget out as you can. Yeah. But there's also a large variety of materials you can work with. So there are price gaps and differences that you can use to balance that. Mm -hmm. You just have to be careful that you're not using something too cheap that then they're going to end up having to pay for again, right? So yes. from a contractor's perspective, I'm just always honest and upfront about where we should spend the money. And here you can maybe save a little bit. I love that. I you don't want a false economy and then you're buying yeah. five of the thing you could have bought one good one of. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yes. What I think start say? that conversation early. Yes. Make sure that everyone's well aware of what the budget is for the project so yes. that you don't run into this down the road. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. And remember, Remember, back in the day, people were not just renovating their whole house. Yes. Yes. That is very new, yeah. and that is very much social media and the media making people believe that everything has to be renovated immediately. For us, it was like one line of credit did the whole house. Right. Yes. Yeah. Let's use this line of credit and do the living room. Let's pay it back. Let's use the line of credit and do the kitchen. Let's pay it back. You know what I mean? Yeah. So phasing things out, I think, is a smart way to look at it as yeah. well. That's yeah. great. Uh, let's talk a little bit pros and cons. The pros and cons of DIY uh, approaches in home projects versus hiring professionals. How do you gauge 
Because you're a DIY. I'm very clear about what I would do <laughs> DIY and what, and what I would do. not do. So okay. anything electrical or plumbing, yes. I hire out 100%. The type of damage that those two kind of fields mm. can cause to your home, something that I'm not willing to take responsibility for. Yeah. Everything else, all of the design stuff is DIYable. DIYable. <laughs> Words of wisdom from Mary. Thanks so much to all of you. And that is the end of Home Day. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to the Bro Laws, Farah, Mary. Thanks to this audience. You're lovely. Thanks for hanging out with us. And everyone at home, I'll see you tomorrow for Fashion Friday. Have a great day, everyone. See you tomorrow.